put it in the cloud. Okay, are you ready? Hello. Oh, Hello. We're do this video. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> that's, the be- that's the beginning of it. It's always a hello. <laughs> you know, even if you haven't been in before. <laughs> All right. So um, there's a few things. I've been doing a, a couple of these and I've been uh, trying to share information with people that I think would, I suppose, help mm, not just in a lockdown or an apocalypse situation like we're in, but in... Uh, in general, um, how people create their experience. That's generally what this is about. So if a person is having an experience, whether it's you or anyone that you know, or myself, the key parts of uh, being human and having the human experience is understanding how you create the experience. So even that can be challenging for some people because they don't know they are creating the experience and they don't know the process by which they go through to create the experience. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So some people would, would view it as they don't create the experience. They feel that the experience happens to them. Yeah. Now, if you, if you haven't bumped into even the, even that is a challenge because if someone is having an experience and they're blaming something from outside of them in their world, when they look at the thing that's outside of them, they are, they are saying, or they are creating the perceptions that produce the experience. And they're looking at it as if it is that that is causing the feeling and they're deleting the bit where they make the meaning on the inside about what they're looking at. So the piece that's always missing between us being empowered or us being a victim is we delete the bit where we make the meaning of what's going on out there. And we are so ready to delete that bit. (laughs) It's like, yes, I can't wait to delete that bit so I can go, it's your fault. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of how it works, right? So let me just, uh, someone's clicking and clinching. Is that, who's coming in? Just move that a minute. Here we go. Has he gone? Oh, there we are, nailed. Okay, right. So I got a few things I want to share with you today. And I got a slide. And um, I just want to run through these because I feel that people often create a lot of self-judgment and they don't really know how to get out of it. So let me just share this with you and see how see how you relate to this and then you can ask a couple of questions and we'll see where we go from with this okay can you see that yeah okay so the question i always ask people is like oh the 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 part of my interaction with others whether they're clients whether they're coming in for, uh, for a training session or whatever is is this person on their own side now how many of us know we give ourselves a hard time yeah 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 So in the moment that you give yourself a hard time, you could say you're not on your own side. Now, there is a knock-on effect of not being on your own side, which is that don't expect to give the person that you're not, whose side you're not on, anything that they want. So if I said you, you saw yourself as the enemy, why would you give anyone that you don't like anything that they want? Correct. So what you're in is a position of, if you make yourself the enemy, don't expect things to get better. Yeah. So it's like, oh, I give give myself a hard time. It's like, fantastic. Did you get that pay rise? No, I got the sack. (laughs) No, I'm not saying that these, this controls the outside reality because that would be, that would be like a fantasy because people have hard lives. We have people have experiences that go up and down and it's not always our thinking that, um, that creates what's outside. I believe that the, you know, the, the reality is independent of it to a degree. However, as the experience creators, we do have some level of influence over that, not control, but influence because thoughts pop up when they want to about anything that they want to pop up about at any intensity at any time. And there's not much we can do about that. That seems to be like a um, like a uh, a random event. Haven't you noticed that the rules for thoughts are they pop up when they want to about mm-hmm. anything they want to be about, any size or shape, and produce any intensity of emotion that they want to, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And anybody who says that you can get control over that is telling the truth, but you can only get control over it after it's happened. Mm-hmm. 
So you can only influence a thought after it's done the random bit. Mm -hmm. But you have no control over the random bit. Yeah? So that means people who do positive thinking can only do positive thinking after the negative thoughts come in. Yes. So if you have 3 million negative thoughts a day, you can only do positive thinking after you've had 3 million negative thoughts a day. You could be busy for the rest of your life doing positive psychology with that particular approach, depending on how many negative thoughts you have. So positive psychology fails people because babies don't come in and go, oh, I've had a negative thought, I better switch it to a positive one. So the key to this is back to the screen share again. which is, are you proving what you think to be true and then trapping yourself in it? Mm. So number one is, like, are you proving what you think to be true and then trapping yourself in the very idea? So like, for instance, beliefs are designed to prove themselves to be true. So if you believe someone's an arsehole, you will never look at them and prove they're not. You will always look for the arsehole you think they are because that belief is designed for you to be right about the perception you have or the meaning you have about them. Does that make sense? Mm. So then if you're uncomfortable in the judgment of them and they're not there anymore and you're sitting in your house on your own, you can be uncomfortable about the idea of them while you're on your own. They're not even there now. So your mm. belief now is torturing you. Mm in a room where they're not mm. in a room yeah. where you're, you in a room where your meaning is disturbing you on your own and it's nothing to do with them at all. Mm -hmm. So you can either run through that or you can challenge yourself with that. So let's, let's so we go to the next one then, which was, which is what I call the four F's. So I love this one because this is where you can break the boundaries of the, um, you can break the boundaries or the limits of the ideas that you have by first of all, finding out or finding out or discovering they are just ideas. If you don't think they're ideas and you think they're true, that is the very trap that I'm on about. Now, if someone doesn't know they're trapped in their own thinking, they will never look for an escape because they don't know they're trapped. So the stage one is to actually know, shit, I'm living in what I think here. And do I want to live in a different reality? Is it even possible to live in a different reality? If what I think is true is just true for me, then I may never know that I'm trapped in my own perception. So then this is the typical grumpy, angry person who doesn't even know there is an alternative perception they could have. Can you see that? Yeah. So then the four F's, I like the four F's. Um, and I always say in the four F's, it's like, You've got to be able to fall over and fuck it up and fail so that you can get to the fourth one, which is the feedback. And most of us are afraid of the first one, the second one, and the third one. We avoid failing, we avoid, avoid falling over, and we avoid fucking it up. So we very rarely get to the feedback bit. That means we never actually get to have something come from outside and feed back into the system, which would cause a change or a shift within us. So the fear of the first three stops us learning. So if I'm afraid to fall over, then I might not risk it. So therefore I never get the feedback. And now all I've got is an idea that stops me from, from taking steps. Mm -hmm. See, so it doesn't matter which one of those F's relates to you. It's like fall over, fuck it up or fail. If you don't get to the feedback, you can't, you can't get the upgrade. You can't get the, uh, the, the next, to the next step, yeah? Make sense? Yep. Yeah. Okay, and then the key to it all, which is back to the simplicity of it all, which is you're feeling your thinking in this moment, normally in a room where nothing is happening. Mm. So my question for today's call is, do you challenge it or do you try to convince yourself against it? So if you challenge something, it'll break open and it'll fail to be true. Yeah. If you challenge, mm -hmm. if I have a belief and I challenge it and it breaks open and then it's not true anymore, I don't have to convince myself against that. It's done. Mm -hmm. 
You with me? Mm -hmm. So go back over it again. See, if I, it's the same as if I have, if I have anxiety or I'm upset and I try to convince myself to, um, I try to convince myself that I'm calm. I have to have the anxiety first then I have to convince myself I'm calm after. So they're both in, they're both in opposition to each other. Whereas if I challenge it and I find out how anxiety works and then I find out I've got a bunch of thinking that causes me to be anxious, which is important because, and then I find the thing that's important. I now learned enough about that, that my challenge is, well, that's ridiculous. And then it stops because it's broken. I've mm -hmm. broken out of it, not mm -hmm. tried to convince myself to calm down while I'm still in it. So you know when it's broken? Yeah. You know when it's broken, you can't go back then. You, the belief, you can't go back to that belief then because that belief is broken. Yeah, it's the same as believing in Father Christmas. Once you find out it's not true, and I know that's upsetting for some of you who like to return to Father Christmas is true. Yeah. At, at Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> what a Christmas. Don't tell me Father Christmas doesn't exist, Dave. Yeah. That's it's, another it's call. Few. That's another call, Dave. That's another hour, that one. <laughs> so we have... Once we have a belief that something isn't, or we, we break a belief, or one counterexample to a belief comes in and it breaks, you start seeing the evidence for the new belief, and the old belief seems ridiculous. Yes, that is that why we have the is this on the right track? That's why I have a feeling that the person I was last year and the actions that I done last year seem utterly ridiculous to me now. That is the effect of having one of those breakthroughs or one of those light bulb moments or having uh, some sort of level of understanding where the things that you were doing at the time you were doing them made sense. Yeah. But you, had a, you had a different level of understanding or a different shift in meaning. And all of a sudden, those things don't make no sense to do anymore. So as soon as something doesn't make any sense to do anymore, you don't do it no more. No, that's right. And that's how I, that's my approach to um, addiction and drug and alcohol and all the rest of it. People go, oh, can you help me with my addiction? It's good. Well, we can get you to the point where when you understand what's going on, if you can get to the, if you can get to the point by, through learning and ch being challenged that doing that doesn't make any sense anymore, then, that, then you're not the person that is doing that anymore because it doesn't, it no longer makes sense. If it looks yeah. ridiculous, that's nearly the end of it. Yeah, that's right. And that's, I think that's what stops then you ever going back to that behavior because you realize how ridiculous ever it is. Going back? It stops me ever going back? I didn't, I'm not going back. You mean you, no. yeah? No. You're right. I think it me, me. Oh, you, right. I was going to say, I, I hate it when people tell me I'm going back somewhere that I'm not. Are you recording? Yeah. Oh, I can see you now. Sorry. It's like, I yeah. don't want to miss all this information. No, I think, I, sorry, Dave, I think... What I mean is, I I will never go back to that situation because I've now seen how ridiculous it was. Yeah, yeah, and so also I, you must have you. This is the bit to, to this is the bit to grasp hold. You must also have an understanding now. So what you're doing is you are looking back and reflecting on how you would never go back, and then looking at the content and whatever. Yes. But really, to reinforce that is to understand where you are now, like. Yes. How you see it now trumps that. That's right. Yes. Yeah. So it's always good on reflection, instead of reflecting about what you've stopped, is to enforce and reinforce and to enhance what is currently making that look ridiculous. Yes. That's, that's right. Solid, that's solidifying where you are instead of trying to look back and give yourself a pat on the back for the shift. See, if I look back on behaviors that I've done before that I didn't like and I've gone, oh, see, I'm glad I'm not doing that anymore. I couldn't do that anymore. That's ridiculous, right? I can feel good in this moment, but I still might not in this moment have discovered that actually the reason I stopped doing that is, and then I look for those and I try to reinforce those in the present moment. So while I'm busy patting myself back on the back when I'm not like that anymore, I'm still not actually solidifying my understanding in the moment that I'm in and going, right, so yes. what's the next step? I yeah. caught myself doing this quite a while. Um, I stopped myself moving forward because I was doing a reverse comparison to what I was like before and going, well, you're much better than you were before, Dave. You're so much better than you were before. And then there's no need to take any more steps now, see, because I've, I've made it out of 
what I didn't want into something that's better than I didn't want. Mm -hmm. And because I'm looking at the comparison to where I didn't want, I stopped moving. Yeah. I'm, pat I'm busy patting myself back on the back in the moment going, oh, I'm glad out of that. See, you must have made it. Look, because you're out of that. That doesn't necessarily mean that you're, you're enhancing where you are ready for the next steps. It means you're busy patting yourself on the back and getting a good feeling out of what's over. Is there an element of self-judgment in that as well? Of in course, that, that of course. Part. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Because the one who was being judged is now not being judged as, as bad as. Yes. Mm. It's not as bad as it was you see, but it's still not an enhanced position, is it? It's still not an open, what are you going to fall over, fuck up and fail next so that you can get more feedback. It's more of a stall. It's almost like you, you make the change and then you stall again for a bit. So if you don't yeah. recognize, if you don't recognize the stall, yeah, if you don't yeah. recognize the stall, then you can spend quite a few big chunks of time in the stall position then without more uh, enhancement. Mm -hmm. It's quite, it's quite a sneaky one, really, isn't it? Yeah, because I think, I think I've had that awakening. I think I've had that feeling four or five times in my life. Yeah. That I would never, you know. And I think, I think that, that I think that can be an an, an ongoing thing. It yeah. totally is. It totally is. And I, you're spot on. And I'm glad you brought it up because one of the things that I'm starting to recognize, which is why these calls are happening and why I'm working with Ray and Aaron uh, on the courses that we're doing and we're enhancing, we're enhancing the umbrella in which we're doing the business, which is why we changed the brand, is yeah. because people are in for a journey. This is a journey. And if, yes, you, really, if you can come in at, to whatever level you want on any of this. I got an example like last night, I watched two people that, that are in our membership group do a coaching session, one coach the other one. It was absolutely incredible to watch. And that is someone who hasn't got all the information but was willing to try and someone who would willing to volunteer to look at something that was gonna, they were going to be quite vulnerable with. It was absolutely incredible. I was like, oh, wow, that's it. And they basically, they executed the four Fs. That was it, both of them. Yeah. Fall over, fail, fuck it up. And the feedback is immense. It's like, wow, the learning experience from that would be probably, it would be on equivalent as the same as coming uh, on a two-day course or on, a, on an eight-day course. That's, fab that's absolutely fabulous. Yeah. I had one of those yesterday, those yeah. realizations. Lovely. I had one of those realizations yesterday. And my mum helped me do it, actually. But it was, it was, it was actually a really nice feeling. What did, what did you, what, what light bulb went on? Um, so I was, tr I was, instead of standing my ground, understanding where my feet were, so instead of just having a solid understanding, um, I had no understanding and I was moving myself around. So I was seeing people above me. So I was trying to act a different way to fit into their standards rather yeah. than standing where I was. Yeah. So um, and that was making me upset all the time because I go, oh, I'm not good enough. And I'm well, upset. you never know where you stand, you see, with that. So that's a relational position. You actually won't know where you stand. So spot on. So what did you discover? Uh, went into a, a metaphorical landscape. Yeah. Um, and I discovered that my feet were just in water all the time. Um, but it, I just discovered, go on. Yeah, water is the unknown. Mm. And if it's shallow water, it's, it's okay if your feet are on something and it's in shallow water, you're still standing in a little bit of un unknown. Yeah. So I was, I was standing on the grit, on the grit in the shallow water. Okay. Um, but before we got to that landscape, I was on a high pedestal type of thing. Oh my God. So yeah. You're coming down. You're coming, falling down, falling you're down. You're knocked Let off that pedestal. Let other people good. down. <laughs> but it was really good because yeah. um, it was, it was as if, somebody had just given me a like just to breathe because it, it I felt like I was so compacted and moving about all the time and then it just 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 released it was like oh yeah well this done, is beautiful. <laughs> let me just explain for those who haven't been involved in our uh, our mindscaping or metaphorical landscaping right um like what Elise just described there is how the neuro neurological part of the body is responding to the 
imagistic side of the brain. So once we map out our reality into metaphorical landscapes, uh, one of the things that she had there was, was a compact. So there's a container involved in that. So one of the things with a container, and you may relate to this, uh, uh, Lisa, is that you have to grow up out of a container. Yeah. Oh, and that can be, growing up can be a painful experience. And mm -hmm. actually, once you grow out of the container, you lose all your support. So you don't know where you stand. So then you're in the unknown. But mm -hmm. mum has obviously done a bit of work with you on that because oh, okay. where you stand now mm -hmm. is still in water, but that's much shallower water than when you're up to your neck or in over your head. Mm -hmm. Well, we moved again. So I, I'm standing somewhere else now, but that's where we, uh, she moved. I grew up and I, and I went into a different landscape. Uh, yeah, you pop into it. This so, is what happens, yeah. and there's layers of experience, yeah? Mm -hmm. And for the purposes of what we're doing on this call, you see, this, this is our inquiry. When you go into it further, this is a way of mapping your psychological territory, right? For the purposes of what we're doing in these open calls is we've got to keep it in a bit more of a, a simple framework, and we've got to keep it into how does this stuff work before you get to the mapping mm -hmm. stage? Yeah, you got to get you get to map it, which is easy. But of course, we can't do a map for everybody on the call. But ultimately, that's what we're looking to do is to get you into some sort of position where you get to, and which is the name of our course. Basically, you get to know yourself. If you do not know yourself and where you stand, what you stand for, then no amount of steps are going to lead you into the life that you want. Yeah, it's just it's just not possible. Most people are taking steps based on not knowing where they stand. So then they don't yeah. take the steps. They don't take the, the correct steps for them. Some because people need to take, go on, sorry. There's a comfort though in, in being in what you know. And if that, that can, that can be, that can be look like shit to other people, but it's like a comfort. If that, you feel, there's a safety that comes with that. Yeah. Let me show you. Right. And, you know, and it's, it's a safety. got a diagram for it, my lovely. Yeah, Cause I used so, to feel, this? That, yeah, go on. See this, right? This is what you're looking at. I'm going to put my glasses on. I can't see myself. <laughs> Look, Jesus, the old man's eyes are gone. Yeah. So you've got <laughs> understanding, confusion, and learning and new information. So if you see yourself as the one in there, you see them? That yeah. Bit, yeah. So what you gain from being in that bubble of your known territory is you gain certainty. And that is your understanding. So if that's a small understanding, that's going to be a contracted space. Yeah. Yeah. Then what you've got is that, uh, what have I built? Well, while you're in there, what you built, it's built from what you know. Uh, it's built from remembering the past. It's built from your conditioning. It's built with your limits are in there and all your errors and mistakes are in there too. So you're living in your errors, your mistakes, your limits, your conditioning, your past and, and what you know. Yeah. Because you can't, you can't live in, anything that isn't that yeah because you don't know it yet so anything outside the bubble is a light bulb moment yeah so what we want to do is if we if we're going to challenge it we go if we're going to challenge your core values or your identity if we challenge who you think you are and it hits the edge of that boundary then what all of a sudden that's perceived as a threat so you, there'll be resistance you'll make yeah. excuses you'll defend yourself against it mm. and then you'll be confused if the boundary wobbles yep Whereas if it's just information coming in and it's no threat to identity, you'll let it in and you'll throw something out. Yeah. Like Father Christmas, I believe in Father Christmas, then I don't. Well, that, that's no threat to your identity. So you'll be able to let one in and throw it out. Yeah. You throw another one out. So you'll exchange information in there. But when, it, when it's about who you think you are, that's not so easy to challenge. No. Because the, the experience of challenging who you are leads to some level of confusion. Yes. You see? So when people say to me, what do you do when you have a resistant client? I said, I don't have a resistant client. There are no resistant clients. They're trying to stay safe. They're trying to avoid, they're trying to avoid the uncomfortable feeling of not understanding. And if you kick someone into one not understanding and their reaction is to get angry, then you go, oh, look at this person. They don't want the change that you're offering them. It's like, no, they literally don't know where they stand. So they're freaking out. You've just yeah. asked them, you've asked them to abandon everything that they know about the world that they're in and who they are. So if they haven't worked out where they stand and then you come along and challenge that, 
oh my God, they're either going to be in tears on the floor or they're going to be kicking off and shouting at you about whatever the hell happens next. And that's going to be a conditioned response. So in my world, when I'm working with people and I see that, I'm like, oh, this is obvious what's going on. But if you see people working with other people, they will, they'll try and pussyfoot around that. They don't actually go, well, how are you going to get new information into that person in a way where if it, if it creates a massive un- misunderstanding or not understanding, then it, I would see before you start putting information in there, you have to solidify where they stand. They have to know where they stand first. So my key piece that always <clears throat> works is do you know you're in a room and there's nothing happening? Yes. That's what we've been trying to say sitting, that each time. Yeah. Absolutely. Because if someone's yeah. sitting in front of me and I can anchor, do you know you're in a room and there's nothing happening? And they go, yes. Great. Name name six objects in the room. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Now you know you're in a room. Now let's get the feeling to happen that you don't want to feel. And as soon as they get the feeling, they go, I don't feel safe now. I said, right. So just check you're in a room and there's nothing happening. And I'll keep playing that game for about 15, 20 minutes until they get used to seeing the room as well as the feeling at the same time. So now they've got a contrasting experience. So their understanding is changing. Yes. Now, some, if some emotions are so powerful, people lose the room. So my job is to watch. When, I'm saying, when I say something, I've got I to gotta decide what to say to see how much to trigger it to see whether they lose the room. And then if yeah. they do, I've got to bring them back and go, right, let's give you some other resources because there's no way anybody should be going anywhere near trauma in someone unless they can anchor them in the room safely so they've got somewhere to stand while they process it. Yeah. So what you find people do in age regression and stuff like that, they take people back in time and they have not given them a platform where it's safe. So they've just basically reintroduced them into the trauma, hoping it's going to release. I feel like that. Actually, you might actually get (laughs) re-traumatized. It's like, where's your safety net to stop them getting re-traumatized? What are you doing? Do you know what I mean? So I get a bit sort of fiery about that. It's like, well, well, I do this technique. And I said, well, but have you checked where they are before you do your technique? You know, this is why this stuff that I'm sharing is beyond technique. It's, it's more into understanding where someone is. And um, I feel like by the time I've made that realization of, oh, am I in the room? Where am I? It's a bit too late because I like, for example, I read sometimes I read and understand a piece of work and I work myself up. I work myself up over it but by the time I've gone where am I I'm in a room where nothing's happening it's at the end of my deadline and I've missed doing my work because I, cause I can't get on with it do you know what I mean or no um, you want me to know what you mean yeah uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> you desperately want me to know what you mean isn't it? Well, it's, it's, gee, what do I do about that Dave well um, see, th- there's a deadline then yeah yeah there's always a deadline because it's my A level when it's right. a piece of work there's always a deadline yeah, I'm not going to die. But... So do you know? Do you know you spend more time in arguing with the deadline and use more energy in arguing with the deadline than you would if you just got on with it? No. See, I didn't so, know I did that. so so instead of you trying to get out of something, let's give you the bit that doesn't put you in it. So you say, mm-hmm. when I go in it, it's too late. I say, well, okay, the bit I just gave you is, to, is before you go in it. It's, it's more of arguing with Oh, yeah, words. but, okay, okay. I'll, I'll, this, I'll try it again. <laughs> oh, I'll try it again. I'll try it again. So we got this person who she goes in it, and once she's in it, it's too late. So she's just said, once I'm in it, it's too late. Yeah? Mm. And yeah. I just offered her something that stops her going in it. <laughs> yes. And she's gone, yeah, but, but what do I do when I go in it? <laughs> So you throw away the solution so you can justify the problem. Focus on it, yeah. Well, absolutely. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share something with you, yeah? And I want you to look at it. And then I want you to understand. I just shared it with you. (laughs) Oh, that says a lot. Basically, this is what you just did. Oh, I know this, but I'm just going to ignore it. You're in there. You're in there. And I've just challenged something. I just chucked something from the outside and I hear the yeah, but see that little red arrow? 
That's mm-hmm. you going, yeah, but Dave, when I'm in it, and I go, yeah, so now everything you know remains in place. Anything I've said to help is being pushed outside. So now you've made it so I can't help you. There is nothing I can say now that can help you because of the position you take on that information. Do you see that or not? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do. So you are getting in your own bloody way. I am. <laughs> so I have got another bit of advice for that. Are you ready? Go on then. Are you ready? Open them yours. You ready? Hit me with it. Hit me with it. Go on. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's the prime. And people go, it process. can't be that easy. And they go, it is that easy. Stop it. Yeah. Literally, that's enough. Stop. That's, is that why we... What's the word? Procrastinate, I guess. Procrastination Procrastinate, yeah. is a mm-hmm. wonderfully natural process of avoiding that which you do not want to do. So that's a real that's indicator that you don't want to mm-hmm. do it. You're not inspired. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah that's exactly it though. So, yeah. so get it delegated as fast as you can because you don't yeah. want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Why have I lost all my motivation? Is that because you're doing shit you don't want to do? That's right. I've got to right. do it though. I've got to do it. Yes. You've got to do it, but I think it's, that's the thing, is when you've got to do something, it can lack motivation because you've got to do it. You're not choosing. Well, yeah. well, I, I don't know. There's an element of this that comes from business. So, at least you're going to come across these deadlines in the world uh, of business. As you get older, it's not going to stop. Uh, it's like you're going to ramp up the feeling. So, that my, my background is business. So, I, okay. my, my, whole, my whole schedule is deadlines to meet when yep. it needs to be done by two, three, But you're seven. not going to die. This, you're okay. not going to die. That's why, that's why I don't like names. But the, the bit for me, for you, with, so for me, I set a deadline on my team to motivate them. So... It doesn't motivate them. But that's, that's, but that's the difference. That's me. As your, if I was your teacher, I'm setting a deadline to you because mm. of that. my condition to you to, get to, to, to motivate you. It's to inspire you to take steps forward. But what we don't realise in the positions of management and teachers, that's not necessarily the best way to motivate people. So you plan to have subjects in A-levels that you just fly. You really, really love. If you're more, if you're more creative, you'll get those done way before your deadlines. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting that those ones get done and you don't think about the deadlines. Mm-hmm. But the ones that you're not interested in that you really struggle with, that deadline really matters. Yeah. Just think exactly. about that. Okay. So, so with the with that as well, t- taking the overall picture, because because you're so young, you don't really know what you're doing it for yet, do you? No. So it's not, a, not really. Not attached, so it's not attached to anything important mm. to you. So it's, I know. This like weird, it's this weird hamster wheel experience you're having, where mm. you got to do this, got to do that, get through this, get through that, because everybody's telling you that if you get there, then things will improve. I disagree with that totally. Sometimes things improve. Sometimes things go to shit. Yeah. But I think when you have like, it's harder to have that view of oh, I'm just getting on with it in a school environment. I think like like what you were saying. Oh, I think it's like shit. When if you go into school with it, oh, I'll get on with it. With my taste. They're more like no, get it done now because then you can do this ready for uni, this ready for uni. So I feel as if I can't. I get. I get condition into their way of thinking and I lose my way of thinking. Do you want to go to uni? Yeah. Mm. So that doesn't sound yeah. really cool to me. So yeah. you can't yeah. see what you've got to do. The, the trouble with this is you're trying to solve it as a problem. Yeah. And this isn't a problem. What isn't a problem? Well you're you're both looking you're both looking towards an outcome and I'm only mm. pointing out where do you stand? Yeah, good point. Mm. Right? So you got because so what it is, you've already got, I don't really know where I stand yet, but now let's talk about where we're going. See, that's the problem. That's the problem. Mm, You're trying to step from where you don't understand where you stand. If you don't know where you stand, what you stand for, what you stand up for, how the hell are you ever going to take proper steps in the correct direction for you? You know. You won't. You won't. What you'll do is you'll step and they may not be your steps. Sound familiar, Ray? Yes. Yeah. So Which is why I'm talking to you. You end up stepping and they're not your steps because you didn't understand where you were. So people are always trying to move forward as well. 
This idea yeah. of, oh, you've got to keep moving forward. What if moving forward is not the right direction for you? What if it's not the correct direction? What if for you, you need to turn and do what's right for you? What if you have to step into what's left for you first? What if you have to turn your life around and walk back the other way and make that the new forward? See, mm -hmm. everybody wants to try and move forward as if moving forward is some sort of miracle thing. But if you were, if you were in a metaphorical landscape and you're having a repeating experience of the same experience over and over again, say you feel stuck, you might feel like you're moving forward in your life, but that stuck experience comes with you into every movement forward in your life. Mm -hmm. So you haven't really moved. Metaphorically or experientially, you haven't grown or moved. So if you want to feel more comfortable in the steps you take in the real world, you have to get that metaphorical landscape and, and where you are sorted out. That's why the focus on everything that I've been doing, this is why, I've, this is why when I'm training NLP, I don't train NLP the same way as everybody else. Because NLP training is all about getting from A to B. So I use NLP training for, as ways of how to communicate with people. So how to get some sort of influence over your experience is where my basis of NLP. So a lot of the time when I'm doing NLP training, they go, well, I thought we were going to do smart goals. And I'm going, yeah, it's in the book. You can look it up if you want. Oh, well, it's part of the syllabus. I go, yeah, I wouldn't dare contaminate your experience with that. Most people's problem is they're always trying to get somewhere and not actually recognizing where they're at. Yeah. Always trying to get somewhere. It's like some people just need to stop and just go, where are you? And then work from there. So if you have a solid understanding, people will offer you ideas and then you can try on the steps to see if they fit with you. If they don't fit with you, you can just look them in the eye and go, nah, that's not for me. How do you do that with like teachers then? Well, you, there's nothing you can do about the circumstances and the situation that you're in except know where you stand. So if someone has an opinion that's opposing to you, as long as you know where you stand, you won't be upset by their matter. opinion. It, as you, you will only be upset by their opinion if you are influenced and you think you should do what they said. Then you're in trouble. That's you then yeah. not knowing where you stand. I see that. Yeah. Yeah. So everybody's got an opinion about something. Let them have it. Doesn't mean they're right, does it? It just means they've got an opinion. You're like, oh, bless them. Yeah. <laughs> People got opinions about me being an arsehole. I go, I love them. <laughs> and, and, and I can find I can find loads of places I've been an arsehole. So I actually go, yeah, let me go check. And go, yeah, there's loads of places I've been an arsehole. What else you got? <laughs> Whereas if I have to fight them, it's because I don't want to be the arsehole that they've just called me. And I'm afraid to look to find that I've been the arsehole that they've just called me. So now I got to fight them to not have that be true about me. Whereas really, I go, no, I've been an arsehole. What else you got? See, I, I only get upset if <laughs> I only get upset if I agree with them. Mm -hmm. which is already in there. It's the sneakiest one. So when people, someone's calling you a name, go check, find out whether you can find a place where you've been that. And if you yeah, can, smile at them. Yeah. But that's when it usually stings, when you know that's the element of truth. Well, see, okay, there's two <laughs> levels to this. This is right, a great on, one. On. So this is self-judgment, right? So the way this works is you said it only stings when there's an element of truth. So now yeah. this whole call from the beginning has been about, are you on your own side? So if there is an element of truth in it, you have a belief about yourself. You're putting yourself down. You're giving yourself a hard time. The jury, the judge, and the prosecution have all had to say you're guilty as charged and you're sitting in your cage of judgment serving the sentence and nobody is in your defense. No one is there to defend you. You haven't got a defense. So then you come and see me and I go, hey, do you realize you've had a, a bit of a dodgy trial there that you didn't have a defense at the time you made that decision? And you go, no. And even when I come on, as the defender and go, well, actually, perhaps you made a mistake there. Maybe that's a dodgy perception. Maybe you can include it and accept it and go, oh, I don't know about that. And you literally are back as the jury, the judge, and the prosecution again, trying to put yourself back in the same sentence. Yeah, but Dave, if, all right, I'll use the bet. <laughs> but if I agree, yeah. if, if the, they are telling the truth, if you were being tried for murder and you've done the murder, you've got to take that. So somebody yeah, said to yeah, me... Yeah, and then you have to... Hang on now. 
are we are we talking about murder or are we talking about you not no, liking but, yourself right so no, then but, your example your example is a, is an example let me put the diagram up again because i'll just show you what you're doing because this happens all the time it's no it's quite normal oh thanks right. <laughs> quite normal. so normal. what you're doing now you've you've just said that see if there's a murder in you if there's a murderer in you yeah yeah then you could say, well, actually, you need to forgive yourself. And then the person might have to go through a load of learning and go, oh, my God, yeah, from what I did with it, that was a ridiculous thing to do. But at the time, I was so angry because I didn't have a very much of an understanding uh, of how, how life works. I just thought that since I was five, people have been putting cigarettes out on me and I've been abused. So therefore, I thought just fucking hurt them before they hurt me and nobody fucking understands and I'm on my own. So fuck it. I'm going to just take on the fucking world. And, I'm, and I ended up killing someone because I lost it completely. See, for me, I look at what's in there that allowed that person to do that. And then I yeah. also know that there's loads of stuff missing from in there and they've made loads of mistakes and there's loads of errors in there. So there's a potential, and I don't, I'm not saying it's absolutely true, but it's a potential that they could get to the point where they go, oh my God, what a mistake I've made. And I forgive myself. So that's them challenging themselves as a murderer. What you're doing is trying to use the idea of a murderer to, to keep your shit going about yourself. Yeah, but where you where you admitted that you can look back, if someone said, Dave, you're an arsehole, yeah. and then you could look back and think, well, I have been an arsehole. Right. Right? So if they said to me, you are now being a petty bitch. Right. What you're doing now is you're, you're stating things instead of asking a question. Right. But no, this is the questions come in. No, so the, pe go on. the petty bitch. Yeah, but you're not. You're defending before you ask a question. So you'd be better off asking me whether, what do I do with finding out I'm an arsehole? Because that's the bit you're after. I was trying to be truthful, yeah. but I admit I, again, with a you're not you're not being it. truthful. What you're doing is telling me your experience of why you're judging yourself to be something, and not asking me how I dealt with mine, so you can learn something new. What do you want to ask, Al? No, I'm trying. What I'm trying to, what I'm there is a question there, but but where I'm I'm trying to fit with you, Dave. That. If you can look back and admit that you were a certain way, right? Yeah. So they were calling you something that you've admitted that you could be that way. Yeah. Right? And, so somebody, and, I still, and I still can. Yes, right? So somebody, say they called me something now. What if I agree with that? Then you have no acceptance of it being there and you have got a bias towards not wanting that there. You're trying to avoid the very thing that you think you are. That's the bit I'm not getting. I, I can't. Well, that's because you haven't asked a question. What you've done no, is I make can't. a statement about what you know instead of asking me, how do I do it differently? But I don't even know what I've got to ask you. This is the thing. It's that's like right. You wouldn't because it's not inside your map, which is, this is no. why you go, how does that work, Dave? That's a good question. How does that work, Dave? How does that work, Dave? I, I don't Fantastic know, Dave. question. Let's see if we can answer that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, just so, it's so confusing. It, it, that bit's confusing. It's, not, it's, like, it's only confusing because it's being challenged, right? Do you get it? It's because it's being challenged, it's confusing. Yeah? Yeah. Right. So this is, this is, I'll do the old version and the new version to see if you can do the comparison of what you, what you may need to look at next, what you may need to learn next. You ready? Right, okay. So now Dave's an arsehole, right? Yeah. So I can look through my whole history and find loads of places I've been an arsehole, right? So, and if you push the right button, I can be an arsehole again, right? Yeah. Now, I have no argument inside of me of knowing that this contains an arsehole behavior. That means I understand something you don't, which is in the world of being a human being, all the ingredients are available and all the ingredients are in the soup. So our soul behaviors are there as much as kind, caring, loving, compassionate, yeah, being a dickhead, right? being grumpy. All of yeah. those ingredients are there. And I don't favor one over the other. They are all the same. They're all part of being human. And I don't try to grab ones that I want and get rid of ones that I don't. They are all there. So that's what you don't understand. Okay. Well, that we, that we can be any, any of it. We can use Let any it. of the ingredients at different times. 
Absolutely. And you're never going to get out of the human soup. It's always going to be there. <clears throat> so if you spend your whole life not wanting to not be one of the ingredients that is there in the soup, I don't want, I don't, it's like if you're in the human soup and every one of the ingredients is what you like and what you don't like, it's like you want to cuddle up to the sprouts, but you can get rid of the parsnips. Uh, but actually the soup includes <laughs> all of it. So if you are trying to eliminate certain things from the soup, that's, that's trying to deny certain parts of yourself. So now that's going to turn into anxiety. Um, it's going to turn into a, fe a fear of loss of status. How will I be seen? It turns into guilt. It turns into shame. Does this make sense? Yeah. It's, why is not? No, it's making a bit of sense. Why is make, not making fully sense? Because it's different to how, people, how I'm usually thinking. Because I think that if somebody called, if somebody called me something that I knew I was, I would just think I was being self-aware. But I can see it's not. It's 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 like if I'm giving an excuse to somebody to treat me badly. Absolutely, absolutely. Because I think that way about myself. So, say somebody that's said, right. well, if, yes, that's so what I'm doing. If, yeah, that's yeah. right. But you're not. So what you're doing there is you're not asking me a question about, to understand. What you're doing is telling me what it's like for you open that you can give me i'll try again i'll try again right you're not asking a question to understand what you're doing is asking questions to defend or try to explain to me your position and i've already given you the solution yes so now you'll either challenge that or you won't if you don't challenge it you get to stay the same with the same experience repeating the same pattern over and over again and, and that will continue until one day you go, so what have I actually got to do here then with this? And I, I would say, really, if you know that you let other people treat you in ways that you don't want them to treat you. Yes. You already know you don't want them to treat you that way. So fucking don't let them treat you that way. You already know it. That's what yeah. it's just. So if you're right. aware, you think you could do it. Right. Me, you know, can I, you, can I just say something? Can I just say something? Switch this. Yeah. If you are aware, then you can do something to if I was aware and I could do something because every time you make it you, you're nowhere near owning it. So it's the word I. It's not the word specifically. It's just that the, what you're saying is closer to you if you use the word I than if you use the word you because yeah. you're seeing someone else or you're seeing beliefs when you use the word you. That's right. Yeah, so, so own it. Because otherwise, how are you, you going to know where you stand if you don't own what you say? Everything you say is away from you. So you won't never know where you stand. So the word you tells you, you're putting all this stuff, every, all of it is away from you. You've got a lot of ideas and you've got a lot of beliefs, but they're all away from you. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So you keep saying, so what do you do? You, 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 yes, you. Yes, I know. Well, that's not me. You're on about you. I'm on about, yes, I am. So I will, I will, ref yes. So that's the thing. I think that is, that's like something that's protected me, that, it, that it's not me. It's a way from, yeah, you're right. It is. It's, it's so way, let it's me ask you this. Me. Let me ask you this then, right? Yeah. So do, do you know, right? I love these questions because they're yes or no. Do you know? So the yes or no, because the question's loaded, right? Okay. I, ask, I deliberately asked the question to load one way or the other. Do you know that you are not on your own side when you do that? Yes. Right. So just write that down. I'm not on my own side when I do that. I'm not. Right. So write it down because otherwise after this call is finished, you'll pretend you haven't heard it. <laughs> Will I? I can, Alison. Get a pen. Right. <laughs> That's the denial of the truth being handed. It's like when I hand a piece of paper to someone in a session. They go, do you know that you're denying this? So they go, and I give them a piece of paper and then we go through the session and about four times in the session, they go, I wish I knew why I did this. I said, just read the piece of paper I've given it you. <laughs> I think, I think, yeah, I think this has always been the thing with when I've come to see you, Dave, you blocked my exits and I think it's, it's good what I got to have done. So uncomfortable. It's so yes, uncomfortable. And that's yeah, what yeah. I need. But I need. notice now, if I block all exits, what are you left with? A room. The truth. Whatever's happening. With the truth. The truth of whatever is actually happening. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so what technique do you use, Dave? I go, well, what it is, we stop all the bullshit, shut you up make you sit where you are and then see what you notice. Mm. And then you go, well, I'm right here. And then you start crying. Why am I crying? Because you've just landed where you actually are. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
in face to face with what's actually yeah. happening. Jesus, you mean you mean it's just about the truth? And I go, yeah, it's awful, isn't it? And I don't even know what that truth is for you because you're the one making the meaning. I'm not sitting there going, oh, I know the truth. Dave knows the truth. I'm going, you are going to bump into your experiential truth of the situation that you're in. That's got nothing to do with my meaning. I haven't got a meaning. I don't care. All I am is a mirror for the truth and, the, and to cut the exits of the bullshit off. Yes, yeah. which can be uncomfortable sometimes. Oh, totally uncomfortable. When yeah. I'm put in that position as well, I don't like it. And, you know, and I, no, I'm saying this is, part of the, this is part of the courage that we have as human beings to grow. This is why I was mm. saying earlier on when I was saying, when I was looking back, well, I'm so much better than I was before. So you pat yourself on the back. That's, that's like a little game to make sure you don't sit in that truth again. Like, I don't want to avoid that. So for me, I find that I'm, I have like repeating break, breakups, breakdowns in the process. So I'll have about two or three days. I'll, I'll have bumped into some information or got into a chat with someone or watched the session or even when I'm working with something, something reflects in me. And then I'll have a wobble for about four days. And I'm like, oh, and then there'll be like, there might be an upset. There might be some crying. There might be whatever it is that comes out. Yes. And then the next two days after that, I have this like massive download of information about how things formulate and oh, mm. this is how it works. And that's how it works. I've been doing that 18 years. That's how it yeah. works. So every time that boundary, when I showed you in that diagram, breaks, the, the amount of information that comes in, you, you are inspired and freed by the amount of information that comes in. Your understanding gets bigger. Yeah. It's the same thing we're seeing from the people who have attended the, the group, the courses as well. So the group now that have come together from the back end of the courses, the more that we're pushing these boundaries with each other, the more this is happening. So these oh, little pockets of it's things absolutely, going on. It's, it's amazing to, to witness watch. it. It's, it's one of the things I've always wanted, which is now I'm like, this is what makes it work because people come on a course and after two days, they get all whooped up because they break through, they have their light bulbs, they get their process after about a month to six weeks people don't want to then fire that back up again. And actually what, what's happening in the group is there's been a constant stream of this information and this, this undoing. So it feels like they're on the course constantly. Yeah. But now the course is not a course. The course is the journey. So, yeah. so you know, I know people who five years after I've met them are completely different people, because, not because of what I did, but because of what they let in into mm. their understanding. And then the steps they took, which I wasn't there when they took those steps. Like, they, I meet them years later and they go, I've done this. And I go, wow, that's amazing. How the hell did you do that? And they go, well, I did this, saw this, sat, did that, challenged this. And off they go. But you like the foundations of a house though. You were giving us, even though we, we have got it in us that's all the time. That's not true. I, will, I am giving you experiential foundations that I didn't know when I was in trouble. No. So right, I right. don't actually, I'm not the provider of the foundations as such, because once they're handed to you, they're your foundations. What yes. you do with those is, see, if you can't use them and you need me to come in and put them under your feet all the time, I'm going to be busy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I got these foundations, Dave, and you're the provider of the foundations. It's like, well, what have you done with the last foundations I give you? I don't know. I lost them. I put it in my bag and it's disappeared. <laughs> Yeah, you've got to build on those foundations. <laughs> oh, I've got to phone Dave again for more foundations. It's like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, but I think more foundations, Dave. Yeah, they're the same foundations I gave you last yeah, time. What did you do the last ones? I don't know where they went. <laughs> do you know what, though? Writing down, that's quite a powerful sentence. It's quite upsetting to think I'm not on my own side. That's, yeah. that's upsetting to me, Dave, because... I, I often give people their own little fridge magnets and go, right, go and put down your fridge. And just look at, it for, look at it for a month. I'm not on my own side. Look at that mean? for a month. And then notice by the end of about a week, you start bursting into tears for no reason. No, I feel it. I'm feeling it now. I don't like that. <laughs> That's okay. No, no, you don't like it. I know. I know. What do you think? But, well, watch now. And then this is why I said about positive psychology. You don't really want to go down there. Oh, well, if I'm not on my own side, I'll just give myself positive affirmations. Like, I'm really on, not on my own side. And then you start going, but I'm lovable and I'm kind and I'm great. And I'm oh. lovable and I'm kind and I'm great. And I'm lovable. It's like, Shut up. You're doing that against the thing that's there. No. Yeah. You're right. This is, yeah, so, it's right. So an affirmation, an affirmation for it to work, what makes affirmations work is that you give up what's already there and then you affirm it like an, like an intention. So you're not fighting against anything. You're just setting an intention direction. 
Okay, Whereas yeah. if you're trying to affirm against something that's already there, all you're doing is causing another yes. battle in values again. You'll have a values conflict. Mm. You go, why am I not sleeping since I've been doing these affirmations? It's like, because you haven't, you haven't shifted the other shit out for this new stuff to come in. <laughs> yeah, but it's like if I've got to defend it first and then it happens. But it's like, it's like if my go-to is let me to ask defend. You, let me ask you. Let me ask you. You ready? Yeah. What are you defending? What is so valuable to defend? Nothing. That's not Nothing. true. Otherwise, you wouldn't be defending it, would you? But I don't know if it's so, a bit. So, so then you don't know. No. Right. I, so there's your, there's your task. Find out what you're defending. Write down what you're defending. You might be defending the position of someone treating you the way you don't want them to. Yeah, I, I can't no more now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. not for remembering what people say. <laughs> no, I think I'm, I think by letting people speak to me in a certain way, because I feel about that way by myself, I, I allow it because they just affirm me right. what I think. Let, anyway. me you, let me give you a little exercise out of uh, Social Panorama. Are you ready? Yeah. So when these people speak to you, just this is a little exercise now, just try it on and then just notice how your experience shifts or doesn't. It doesn't matter if it does or not, but we'll do it together and see how we come. Everybody okay with this, guys? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right, so it's really simple. When you think about people who you let speak to you like that, yeah? Yeah. Close your eyes and tell me which direction they are. Where are they located? In front of me. And are they eye level higher than yours or lower? Higher. Right. And how close are they? Very close. Right. So what I want you to do is I want you to move them to the left, directly left. Okay. Yeah. And yep. then change, change your eye level so that the eye levels are the same. Okay. That might involve you growing up a bit. So what people mostly want to do is shrink them down. Yeah. Instead of growing themselves up. Yeah. So if you, if you are a child and you shrink them down, then your attempt to shrink them down is, your, is a childish attempt to shrink them down and won't stand. It won't hold. Whereas okay. if you grow yourself up to the same eye level as them and they're to the left, how does that feel when they're, when they're saying exactly the same thing as they normally say to you? But this time now you've grown yourself up to the same eye level and they're to the left. How does that feel as an experience? It, it doesn't, it, it makes, it makes me feel, I don't know. I just, it, it doesn't make, it makes me feel that it's not true. It makes me feel. Yeah. yeah. That that, so what they so say there's, it feels like it's not true. What's not true though? What they've been calling me. That's right. So you find out that it's not true. So now we don't need a retrial. We don't need to go to the judge and jury again. You actually just moved the person, grew yourself up, and all of a sudden, not guilty, Your Honour. Yes, um, you're right. I know. I'm always fucking right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> don't tell him that. Even when I'm wrong, I'm right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I always tell you. people just assume I'm right it saves us loads of time it does, it does. <laughs> but thank, thanks for that Dave I have, I've got to seem to go through that denial and very defensive to then only, do you know what I mean? no no you only have to do that if you put them in front first yeah and I do straight away so, so slow down now do you have to go through that if you always put them to the left and grow yourself up first no. Well, shut up then. Stop talking rubbish. But that is no. You're right. You put him in a nutshell. <laughs> I keep oh, telling he's right. I love this. <laughs> 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 he's got a little chart. There's all his strength. What, really people say to me, so, so what's the session like with Dave? Then is he? Go, yeah, shut up. You're talking rubbish. Do this instead. <laughs> 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 this is Dave's therapeutic approach. Yeah, shut up. Let's just, just I don't want to know all of that shit. Just <laughs> let's, let's do some other stuff instead of that. <laughs> it's great. It's great. Uh, and I think us being on the call is enough that, you know, us even attending this is, is, is saying something, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. There's nobody in this room that doesn't, uh, that isn't in a position that wants to challenge themselves, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and, and this is about learning. So, you know, even if, say we have to do, say you have to do that exercise three or four times and then it doesn't work or you have what Elisa's experiences is that it kind of works and then it, but you're in it before you can get out of it and all that. 
Yeah. There is then another intervention where we find the metaphorical landscape or we do some eye movement stuff to remove it. There's so many other things that can make that a permanent shift. My job is like Sherlock Holmes. I've got to work out which bit. So I know how to change the state. And I know what to do to prove to you that if something was a certain way, you'd feel different. Yeah. So on these calls, what I'm doing, when we're, in, when we're in the membership group, we are doing the other things, right? When we're on these calls, because I don't want to go too deep with someone in, in a call in front of other people, what I do is I show you the pieces that will make a difference. So you know I know the pieces that will make a difference. I help you change your experience so that you now know, oh, my God, that's what I have to do to make myself feel different, to make something not true. Yes. Now it's what drives the old behavior versus how do we get this new, this new view or this new perception mm. to be the one that's chosen over the old behavior. And that's when we get into the coaching bit. Okay. So the setup is right. I can mostly within 15 to 20 minutes, help someone change their experience about what's happening to them as an experience because I kind of can see what they're doing. Then to get that as a permanent shift might require three or four sessions yeah. over three or four months, like four weeks apart. Okay. So we, we never really know which is the piece. Some people just, they click it straight away after one, some people three or four, you know, and mm -hmm. it's like, that's how it works. Some people need say three sessions and then I don't see them for six months. They come back and then it clicks on the one like yeah. six months later. So yeah. this idea that, you know, inverted comes all oh, fast change through NLP. There's no, yes, you can make some shifts. It was a phobia or a cure or something like that. You can do a 15 minute intervention and you can get rid of a phobia. So that person goes, woohoo. Yeah. When it comes to personality and it comes to the idea of yourself, where you stand, what you stand for, what your values are, what your values conflicts are, what your relational position is to other people and life. As soon as you get in that arena, stuff is a bit deeper than just surface techniques. Yeah. Mm, yeah. yeah. So this is what we're bringing to the table as a team under Break Free and Thrive is we're going deeper than the surface techniques. This is about understanding and this is about enhancing what you've got to the point where you just go, that's this, everything that is blocking you looks ridiculous. It's like, oh, that's just ridiculous. Why the hell did I even think that? Mm. Yeah. You know, that, and that's what's on offer. That's what, that's what we're up to. So the more people are involved, great, because there's levels to which you can come in. And if you ask Lisa, you know, her mum at the moment is flying with this stuff. So she yeah. is actually oh, yeah. coaching people. And since she's been on that course, she's actually flying with it. And like, we're watching her producing results that you look at it and go, how the hell is she producing those results? She, yeah. she doesn't know as much as Dave. How come that's happening? It's because the foundational pieces are in and all she's doing is staying in the foundation and working from there. I think it goes down to the understanding, but it's the work that she's done on the courses of getting that grounding of where she totally. is. So when the communication yeah. comes, it's from where she stands. There's no, there's no way that she understands that position. That root, that root part is so important. Inward mm -hmm. first and outward after. She so is that the course? Like, oh, no, go on. Sorry. Go on, go on, go on, Elise. I was going to say, but she still, she still can not slip, but she still has moments where she doesn't know where her feet are too. So it's like, oh, I've not know where you yeah, so me. she, so, me. so yeah, it's normal. I think that's a lot. Of, that's like again at the start of the call, we do punish ourselves, or we we don't give ourselves enough encouragement because we think we should act one way sometimes. Yeah, but my my mum does it, and she's been on this course. So, and this is something that people ask me all the time. So you go, well, if you've been on the course, Dave, then then how come people are coming back? I said, because it's, because it's a lifelong Natural, learning yeah. experience. Yeah. You're not going to go anywhere and get a one minute fix for something. You just forget it. You just forget it. What are you thinking? You're off your head. <laughs> if you think you're going to, oh, can you just give me a magic button? But when I press that, everything will become good. It's like, yeah, at the point that they asked me that question, I said, right, I immediately know this person needs to grow up because that's not how life works. So is the course this one that I was going to go on the two day one? This is all of them. All of them do the same thing, and you are in whether you go on the two day or you go on the seven day or the eight day yeah. with us. Uh, you are in the membership group for a year, you get a free year's membership, which means we're at the moment twice a week we're meeting. So, you basically it's intense. I never thought fucking end up would be so much fun, if I'm honest. It has been a roller coaster ride. If getting it I wrong is such an interesting <laughs> journey, <laughs> yeah. And there's people doing things and saying things that you're like, they, that, they're not the same people. They've just completely changed. That'd be fantastic to see. 
Well, I would have said best to not be on the sidelines, on the benches, watching everybody in the match and get off the bench and get on the pitch. Yeah. So when it is, although it's wonderful to see, there's no good you being on the sidelines and watching everybody else get that. You've got to include yourself in the game. And you've got to wait till after all this is over now, though, Dave, so you can get your class back going. Yeah, maybe. Maybe we'll see. Yeah. We'll be out now. We'll all be... We all be in the, in the room with our corona masks on. Has yes. masks. <laughs> and the gloves. <clears throat> I gotta, maybe I'll get some uh, fishbowl helmets made with some some cotton wool and, you know. Very the, the, attractive, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I'm glad to see that. Eh? <laughs> it's uh, only the best for the students at Dave's courses. Oh, Celebrity yeah. status. <laughs> <laughs> It'll work. We'll do some social distancing. Huddle you all up next to each other with your fishbowls. It'll be great. <laughs> yeah, it's banging our heads together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah any other question guys do anybody want to see that diagram again do you understand what i'm trying to push at let me just let me push this one again sorry i have a question Dave, but it's, it's not it's not related kind of, i don't know it's basically i struggle to make a decision all the time so if i if i've been given two things i like i won't make a decision for ages on which one i want to do you are then. And that bothers me. You. you are. This is it. So, the second one on you. You're afraid to fall over, fuck it up, and fail. Yeah. Right. So, you never get the feedback. So, if you avoid the first three, you won't get the fourth. Anybody who doesn't get the fourth asks everybody else what to do. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so that means every time you ask someone else what to do now what you're bumping into is i am failing to get the feedback i've got the first three f's working they're stopping me from making choices so i better not make the decision just in case i fall over better not make this decision just in case i fuck it up better not make this decision just in case i fail but actually after those three is the bit you're after, but you don't like the feeling that is produced. Mm. So you avoid, the value is I avoid the feeling of the first three so I don't mm. get to learn anything. Mm. I stop the learning process. I don't get to the feedback. <clears throat> Does that make sense? Yeah. So you see what you could do is if you look at the relational position you're in, if I said to you, you know when you're making a, you know when you are failing to decide or you're frightened to decide, yeah? Mm -hmm. What are you standing on? Like a racetrack. You don't know what? Like a, like a, like a racetrack. I just feel like I keep a running on a racetrack. Like a, like, is it tar? That yeah, enough? okay. Like a racetrack, yeah. yeah. But notice that it's a perpetual running. Are you, are you oh, standing yeah. or are you Always. running? Always. Always just run in, but because it's right. round. This is what I want no you to finish. do. I want you to do one thing right now. Are you ready? So think about making a decision, okay. right? And then what I want you to do is to sit down. Just sit down. Right. Okay. Just sit down in the metaphor. So think about, oh, I've got to decide this. I've got to decide that. Right. Okay. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to sit with it. Sit down. Okay. Now, if you sit down, do you want to ask someone else? Yeah. You still want to ask someone else, even yeah. if you sit down. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> okay. Just, just check. Just check. So what are you trying to do then by asking them? Does it Basically slow it down by sitting them. down? Say that again? Does it slow it down by sitting down? Yeah, it makes me look at it rather than I can, right. I can it just stop. Right, it stops. So anybody who's going to make a decision is going to have difficulty making a decision if everything is going on really fast. Yeah. So if you sit down, it stops. But mm -hmm. at the point where it stops, the reason you still want to ask someone else is because you're not sitting there looking at it and working it out for yourself. I feel like I, I, I'm, I'm always working it out. Even when I sat down, I'm still like, oh, yeah, but this, this could lead to this, and this could lead to this. Oh, whatever. Yeah. And I just yeah. don't Liv, make a mind what are you, what even are you when I'm sat down. On that then? What are you standing on then when this could lead to that, this could lead to this? Then it sounds to me like you're all over the place. 
No, it's, it's just as if I'm still running. Just, yeah, so you didn't sit down. That's my point. No. That's right. So <laughs> what I want you to do is to sit down. Yeah. Okay, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I still feel like I oh, want to ask God. a question. I go, are you sitting down? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Yes, I am, Dave. I'm sitting down. <laughs> right. So if you don't sit down, you're not going to discover the new position and you're not going to discover the feedback. See, the way, to, the way to enhance the experience is to change the experience. Your relational position to making decisions at the moment is you're on the run. Yeah. If you sit down, that's the first step, is to, is to stop the running experience and sit. Now you can now adjust the strategy for what next. But if you don't sit down first, you'll always ask someone else. And as soon as you sat down, it stopped but you immediately got back up because you went into, oh, so, but, but what if this, what if that, what if this? You literally sat yeah. down for less than two seconds. But when I, but then, um, no, I didn't know. Like, listening no to me talk this. <laughs> I know what you're doing. Oh my God, wow. He's going, no, I didn't do that. Yes, no, you did. Yes, you did. This? Yeah, you need to, I don't, I, I, I know I don't let it sit. I always want an answer. After Fantastic. Else. So don't, so this is what we're asking you to do is just take a seat. Maybe the exercise is, is to still go and ask someone else, but you're not allowed to ask them until you've sat with it for at least five minutes. Five minutes is a long time. Set a timer as, as to get the feed, because you actually want the feedback of the experience of sitting down. You don't even want the answer as a decision. You just need the experience of the sitting down first. That's the first stage. Okay. Yeah. So don't try to get the answers because you make get better at decisions, the better you get at sitting. Yeah. There you go. See that time she tried it on. That was better. Yeah. <laughs> that was better. <laughs> Those who pretend to sit down while still running shall be slapped. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get away with nothing, see, can you? It's like, no, you no. don't. Oh, damn, I ate it. I ate him. I ate him. <laughs> it's hard because you, you watch it with body language, don't you? So you well, know this anyway. Is, this is what's useful for the videos is because on a call, I can't really tell whether someone's doing that. But when I got a video, I can go, nah, she's not sitting down. <laughs> no, you're right. You're ready to go in. <laughs> I'm racing around. Yeah, she's no. racing around everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> okay, any other okay. questions, guys? How are we doing? I think I'm, mm -hmm. I'm all right. <laughs> I've got a lot to think about, Dave. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's uh, the most important thing for you when you think about it is, th is to write down this one. What if you're wrong about everything you know? Oh. <laughs> what if everything that you know inside the boundary of you, what if you're wrong about all of it? Now, if some stuff is supporting you, then maybe don't spend too much time being wrong about that. But if you've got ideas that pin you in or hold you back or block you off or give yourself a hard time or beat you down, then I would have said, what if you're wrong about all those? What if that's a crock of shit and you've made loads of mistakes? In fact, one of the, my favorite ones is, how do you know the voice you use to tell yourself those things is you? Mm. Yeah, the realization. Oh, oh, well, think about it. So, so when when you t when you tell yourself something, right? Does yourself answer back? <laughs> I don't know. Well, that, well, but think about it, right? If if that's your voice, if that's you speaking, whichever side of your head it's on, if that is actually you speaking, why is it using a voice? If it's you, it would know what it was saying, and it wouldn't need to say it because it's all you. However, yes. if it's saying something oh, to good. you, then it can't be you. Oh, wow. <laughs> Sorry yes, about that, guys. You. I thought I'd just blow you. <laughs> yeah, <inside>. bye. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. That, that's a hell of a cliffhanger. Um, that's the end of that call. Listen, open Zoom is my, all my brains are dripping out my ears now. That's the end of that. Ears are bleeding. <laughs> 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 Be warning. <laughs>
What's that? So you say that and then you go, right, oh, that's me signing off. See you next week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like that. I love to drop them. That's like one of my favorite hand grenades. Drop one of them and see how they go. Yeah, see you next week. What the hell? Voices. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go. <laughs> you gotta have fun with this stuff. You can't be yeah. can't be taking all this too serious. No, no, and I think that's what if, you do. Take, what you know, I notice is the people who take the human experience too seriously for too long a time, they end up with mental health issues. Yeah, you've got to have a sense of humor about this shit, and even even spiritual seeking. It's like you literally got to have a sense of humor with it, or you'll drive yourself potty. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm getting yeah. somewhere. No, you're not. No, you're not. You're talking crap. No, you're not. <laughs> Nobody's getting anywhere. You're stuck here. <laughs> you're stuck here with a head full of stuff telling yourself you're getting somewhere with a voice that isn't yours. <laughs> and you really believe they're thinking. Mm. Well, but, but the game, the game is to not be bothered by that because there's nothing wrong with the voice being yours. There's nothing wrong with being your identity. There's nothing wrong with being the character. There's nothing wrong with having all those ingredients in the soup. This is about acceptance of the human experience. And then where do you stand? It's not about trying to be a better you or trying to fix this or I've got to get this broken stuff out of there and, it, you know, clean it up and get some level of acceptance of of. The human experience. Yeah, I think that's correct. It's a level to get acceptance of that I, do you know what, I'm, I'm okay. I am not, that I'm, that I'm okay with what I am, good and bad. Yeah, but you're trying to convince yourself you are instead, and, but while keeping, it's like having a, a load of dung in your rucksack on your back and then trying to convince yourself you haven't got the dung on your back. That's right, yeah. Yeah, so what you do is you take it off and there's no convincing, there's just like, oh yeah, there's no one again, there's dung. Yeah. But okay. it's not. Oh, it's not like oh, I got to get this off because it's a terrible experience. Just every now and again, yeah. you, you smell a bit. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah it's gonna sometimes be with you're you. a bit stinky, and people go, "Go away." <laughs> uh, could be worse. Could be my dung. Yeah, look back at it. I'm glad she carried it. I always, I always find that. People go, I feel terrible. I got, it's like I feel I've got the weight of the world on my shoulders. It's like, okay, well, how big do you have to be to have the weight of the world on your shoulders then? How important are you to carry a world? Fucking hell, for fuck's sake. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're right. You're right. And then I've had people then have gone, well, I, I, it, feels like, it feels like the whole world is spinning around me. You're like, where are you then? Well, I'm in the center of it. So you're the center of the universe, the center of the world. That's how important you are. <laughs> that's the thing though when you say those things right even though that is so spot on i can see people will, will get quite defensive over that yeah yeah i always ask them what they're standing on while they're the center of the world they go wow that looks a really uncomfortable position it's like one of the courses we had one of the guys was like he had a reasonably sized universe and he had it in his hands I was like, wow, a reasonably sized universe. How big has he got to be to be holding a reasonably sized universe? <laughs> yes, anyone anyway, really, my new. Well, all we're really looking at there is someone being afraid that the universe is going to have control over him. So yes, he's, made him, right. he's represented it so that he has control over the universe because otherwise yes. he's going to have all these un- insecure feelings coming up. That's yeah. right, yeah. yeah. So, so it's understandable, even though it's like quite comical as well. Yes, yeah. but and, I think and, you do the right mix, Davis. You know, you're talking sense, and you have a laugh. Yeah, absolutely. You've got to have a bit of a sense. You've got to do all this stuff with a bit of a twinkle in your eye, really. Yes, that's right. That's but that's how you get the best results out of people. I think that you've got that twinkle of you know why you're being pushed. You may not like it. <laughs> I'm on your side. I'm on your side. I, I, I all I'll do is slap. I don't give a. I, I'll even tell people. I said, "Oh, it's wet fish time." I'm just put wet fish up. Yeah, bucket. Just yeah. gonna slap you with this wet fish for half hour now, and then yeah. uh, and if you, when you've had enough, just let me know. I yeah. think I need some wet fish. What's that? Know, he's got a shotgun in the bag as well. Mind. I've seen him pull a shotgun out with his bosses. I should go out well. <laughs> <laughs> wet fish technique. That's yeah, so funny. Love it. But, but I found it quite beneficial. It's like, if you want to bring people to the reality, then you have to slap them with the reality so that they go, they come face to face with it, literally. Yeah. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Yeah. Because anybody can do fantasy. You give someone an opportunity to go off into fantasy. And most of the time over a cup of coffee, they talk fantasy. 
Mm. Oh, and then yeah. I thought I'd do this, and then I thought I'd do that, and then I thought we'd do this, and then, and then I'm going to buy some curtains, and then I'm going to, and then, yeah, and they all do this, all these fantastic fantasies. Are, where do you stand? What's the real? What's the real shit that's going on? What, is you know, is that it, like? Is oh, sorry, go on, please. Sorry, I cut across to you. I cut across to you. Sorry, were you going to finish saying what you were saying? No, no, I'm okay. Finish. I you never finish recess. <laughs> um, I was gonna say that is that what it's fantasy like if but and maybe um more more shoulds and shouldn'ts oh okay. shoulds and shouldn'ts are our key our key fantasy they're almost like justified ways of torturing ourselves shoulds and shouldn'ts yeah yeah, yeah? yeah. if I think something shouldn't have happened. I could, I could gang around with 50 people and they all go, oh, yes, that's terrible. That shouldn't have happened. And I go, yeah. Now ask them all how they feel about it. And then some of them will go, it shouldn't have happened. They go back to their house, have a cup of tea and forget about it. And other people will go, it shouldn't have happened. They go back to their house, they torture themselves for the next yeah. two years. About it. Mm -hmm. So your relationship yeah. with the should or shouldn't is not so much the word, but how you represent that in your head and how you create the argument with the reality. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so I always see it like a little bar, a little jar. You got your little jar of shoulds and shouldn'ts in your pockets, and someone else invites you to should or shouldn't it, and you open it up, and then as soon as you open it up, you are going to get pissed off about something. As soon as you open it up, it's like, oh, would you like a should or a shouldn't? You go, yes, I don't mind if you do. Well, look at this bloody weather, and they said it was gonna, they said it was gonna be fine, and look, it's raining. As you go, and look at that, there's a homeless person on the street. They should be giving him a house. And you go, and say, anybody else want to? Anybody else want to should or shouldn't? You go, yes, I love one of them. Oh, do you know last week uh, the guy didn't come and fix my phone. He should. He said he was going to be there at one o'clock. He should have been there at one o'clock. He didn't come to to anybody else want one fucking hell here we go <laughs> <laughs> so get your little jar of shoulds and shouldn'ts and offer them around and then watch how everybody starts bitching and moaning about everything yeah mm. facebook's a perfect example i want oh, someone yeah. to post up i want a meme yeah shoulds or shouldn'ts on the jar just like <laughs> don't offer me one of these <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a skill it's a skill to not take one Yes, it is. It is a skill to not take one because everybody will offer you it. Yeah. Mm. This happened last week, and then we go, "Oh well, you never, you never guess what happened to me." See, as soon as <laughs> well, this happened to me last week, and you go, "Well, you never guess what happened to me." And oh, here we go. Now they've got a, they've got a little group of shouldn't, shouldn't does. And if they yes. get really good at it, they can be, they can end up in the depression support group. If they do, if they do it for years, yeah. and if they've got trauma and they shouldn't, shouldn't in it then that's when, that's when it gets really difficult for people. And that can be a really tough situation to get someone out of. Because to get someone to give up the, what they think should or shouldn't have been the case. I've even had people with double timelines. Literally, they've got a line of time, which is the life they lived. And then they've got uh, another timeline where their dad left when they were three. And they have got this parallel timeline next to the one that they've got. They're the one they lived, where he, uh, one that they've actually lived. And then the other one has got, if he'd have been there and not left at three, my life would have been different like this and like this and like this and like this. So they got literally two timelines and one of them's a complete fantasy. Yeah. My life should be, would be, could be, if only different to this. Mm -hmm. and, and, and at no point is it, yeah, but you live in the one you live in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or I don't want to know, oh, well, yeah, but you just, you just don't understand. I'm going... You've got two timelines, and I'm the one that doesn't understand. It goes back right. to the start of the call, doesn't it? That understanding. That person will sit there and say, it's you that doesn't understand, but in reality, it's them that doesn't understand. Where the they one who yeah. says, you don't understand, wants to be understood. And it doesn't matter how... This is what the way trauma works is this. It doesn't matter how much that person wants you to understand. Trauma works in the way... They, and while they offer it, they also know nobody will ever understand. They, so why they, do they seek help then? They, often they don't. They just want someone to understand. Gosh, yes. So that's why they defend the experience and tell you all the mm. stories. They want you to sit there and understand what it was like for them because they don't actually believe they can change it. There's nothing in the system that says, I can heal from this, I can change this. You've got, there's a point where that happens. If you mm -hmm. offer enough possibilities, 
then they might flip over to, oh, actually, I can change this. But most of the time, trauma to trauma is about just wanting someone to understand while knowing nobody will ever understand. This is why the metaphorical landscape work is so powerful, because out of all the things that you can map for someone's experience, that is the one thing that when the map is there and the other person is being fed that map back, that's the first time in their whole of their lives they've gone, oh, my God, this person understands. It's on that piece of paper. That is the understanding. With no content. So they've connected back to humanity now. They're now not isolated because someone understands. But it's come through the imagistic side of things uh, from the unconscious part of the brain. Dave, you know the drawing you had, I, I done when I was with you last? No. Where they me. say, when they say, you know, I think you've got, the, you've got that name for it, I can't remember, where, you know, you describe how you feel, like when they say you're in the pits of despair, so you drew the... That's it, yeah, yeah, that's the landscape, yeah. yeah. That's that, is it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I tried that because when I was with you, I, I, I seen like I was always in high grass. And then when you look out, it's like my future looks like it's a moan. The, 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 There's no future. This, the difficulty with that you're doing now is your cross category. So the future isn't in a metaphorical landscape. It'll be like something. So if a future is bright, then it'll be trees and grass and a path. Right. Like okay. That. So the, yeah, the but grass. But wouldn't, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't actually see future like where you're doing your exams no. and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah, so I think the grass was low. So I was coming out of deep high grass to low grass. Right. And my husband was behind me in the high grass. Yeah. But when I got to the short grass and I could see, yeah. he, was in, he, he was on the right side of me. Yeah. So and I like think, you. yeah, when, I, when you put it like that, to get somebody to do that, and I've done that exercise as well with my daughter, she said, I feel like I'm it's in my head against a brick wall. Yeah. So she's up against something then. And we don't know yeah, what it is. So I, I put the wall there. So I said, you were, so, you know, we, we sort of done yeah, it. In, do you, do you, okay. She, she said she's bashing her head against a brick wall. Yeah. Okay. So I'll, so I just go, how tall is the wall? How big is the wall? Which direction is the wall in? Yeah. And then the, one of the key bits is what you're standing on. Right. Because some people are up to the, shins in mud cement glue honey whatever the quicksand but again that's, that's so, what this calls about it all started around the understanding you can have all of the future and all the other sides of this equation without an understanding without what's underneath yeah you can't step you can't move so, forward can't so these forward. things that you're describing now they're not for this call right because the landscapes are when we're going in a bit deeper and we start working with people now you have worked with me so there's a there's a level of um you've touched on this from some right of the yeah that you've done yeah but if you'd have done you know if the two-day course had gone ahead you we would already be having a different conversation and you'd already have all the answers <laughs> to that what to where you're at now Right, so I've touched on it, and that there's yeah, more yeah, to it. Yeah, yeah, and there's just more. There's more and more and more, and it depends on where you want to go. It's the same as, uh, like I said, my way of training neurolinguistics is different to everybody else's. So, um, it's a, it's a journey. You literally are on an intense shift change journey. So you're not right. coming in to learn NLP skills per se just to come in, learn the skills, go off, and then they've got NLP skills, yeah? yeah? It's more you come in and you get submerged into the experience completely, and then the skills get put in as you start to understand. And, and then your skill set is coming from an integrated experience, not from an intellectual stop pissing people off with your meta questions type of the game you know <laughs> oh well, so, so how would it be different to that then? You know, you, you know that shit doesn't help anybody. Because it's not a deep enough experience to really mm -hmm. make a difference in, or, or to connect with someone or to make an impact, you know? Yeah. You can buy the books on Amazon. That's not the experience you're going to get from No, day. that's not. It's, and, and even the manual that we got, it's like 176 pages. Like, there's no way we're going to cover 176 pages in that, in that workshop. But what you will get is the foundational principles into the muscle. Yes. That means when you say something to someone, you understand what you're saying and why you're saying it and what it's doing. Not, we need to learn a technique without understanding what the technique does yeah. or how it works. So you need to have the, the, me, uh, the meal experience, not just menu. Oh, well, I know how that works. And you go, yeah, but do you really know how that works? Have you been through the experience? Do you understand it fully? Is it part of the muscle as opposed yeah. to, it's just, uh, here's, my, here's my coaching questions, Yeah. Here's my coaching yeah. questions, and I just ask these. 
Yeah. And then someone replies and because you have no understanding, you write the answers down, but you don't really understand what they've said and where they are in relationship to what they've said or what's presupposed in what they've said, you know? So there's so many different levels to explore this that it depends what level you want to come in at, you know, this is never ending. So the deeper you come in, the more you learn. Simple. But what if, what if I would go on? Sorry. Sorry. What's the difference between the two day and the six and an eight? Right. The, the, the eight day course is full bore certified NLP training. And with that one, we take the two day stuff only we give you all the communication and interaction skills with that. So you're able then to start using it with other people. The two days to give you the foundational principles and integrate them within yourself. So you have a full understanding of what you would use NLP for if you had the NLP skills. It's like a, it's like a way of giving you the base level without doing a full eight day. So you get all the basics. And then you go, right, I understand what's going on now. And then you'd ask questions from the two day. Like, so how do I, when I, when I share what I know with someone else day from the two day, how come they don't get it? Now you need the eight day because you want to be able to use what you, what you can say Uh to pass information back and forth from a relational position or whatever interactions you're going to do. So the eight day takes you not, not just from you, but it allows you to then share it and change other people. Right. Okay, yeah. Does that mean you don't become a practitioner, though, do you? You That's become an NLP practitioner, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And, I, and I don't do the master prac either. Um, I would rather, because, because a master, even though it's a pyramid selling, do you sell the next course, sell the next course? Yeah. The trouble with master, master practitioner is, even though there's more information, and you could learn more information. What I find is that people come on a practitioner and if you do not integrate the skills, then what are you mastering? By giving you more information? If you haven't yeah. mastered the first lot and you haven't got the base, so I let people come on the practitioner at, at a reduced price, not as a, not a master practice. So you can repeat it, plus the year's membership as well. You're getting into something then where you're getting, uh, you're getting all that foundational stuff and you get a repeat on. Now, there might be a point where you might want a master practice a certificate but i've never seen anybody wave a certificate at anybody and they change anything mm-hmm. you know okay. people come in and go let me wave a certificate Ooh, have you changed yet and they go no it's because it's not the certificate that does shit the certificate yes. is for you to feel good in the position that you've got uh as a as a person who has got um i suppose the skills it, it does it does uh level up a skill set and say this person is skilled to this level but what i found to be honest really the skill level is the number of hours that you spend talking to people and and understanding yeah. where they yeah. are so yeah. that's the maximum so 12 years, think, after 12 years i've been doing the nlp stuff and from a management perspective and business the way i now communicate with teams and it's just cross-functional from most senior positions in the business all the way down to what is seen as the lowest level it just allows me to communicate very fluidly across all of those levels. So, and I'm comfortable in any of those situations. There's no, they're higher, lower. Yeah. See, it's been uh, an interesting journey, isn't it? Yeah, Paolo, it's, it's been a while, isn't it? You've been, you've been involved for a while, isn't you? Yep. Yeah. It's a good place to be though, that you can talk over, you know, that you're comfortable with all people. But that's the difference is I wanted to be in a position where I talk to people at all levels, not to all levels. Yes. Yeah. yeah. There's a difference between management and leadership, and that's where my core belief is. I want to lead people. I don't want to tell people what to do. I want right. them to find themselves. So that's and you get the best up to people like that. There's there's something else that we're the best up as well. there's something. Yeah. There's something else that we're starting up as well. We haven't had a chance to do it yet, but I know we we've had our meeting, our own meetings with regards with Ray and uh, my uh, my eldest son Aaron as well which is that uh, like a business mastermind thing as well. So anybody that's got their own business or is thinking about uh, how to enhance their business. So from like Ray brings that leadership stuff to the table and I bring this, um, where do you stand? What do you stand for? What's your, where are your core understandings? Because most of the time you find that people's choices in business are based on sometimes quite a few errors that they picked up from conditioning and they're not getting the best out of themselves in their business. They're making choices that are not supporting themselves in their own business. So, you know, we, that's another mastermind group thing that we're going to be starting up as well. We might start that up on a zoom because 
there's something we can do about it's new and we can start that up anyway this is one of those things that we don't need to put anything on in the room because we haven't had anything booked for it yet but uh, you know that's future stuff so you know like i said you can get involved on any level with any of this all you've got to do is just ask and be like okay this is this is where we're heading this is where we're heading with it. it's your journey okay. you've got to ask yourself what do you want and if you're not yeah. you know if you're not happy and you know that it's your meanings and perceptions that hold you in that then that's that's your point of right so what do i do now what do i do now yeah. and if you don't learn if you don't learn anything and you don't grow you'll be in there forever because it's you know life will come along and maybe kick your ass once or twice but uh better to just grab the bull by the horns and go right where am i going with this have a look yeah, you know? it's, like, it's exciting times <laughs> it is <laughs> yes <laughs> It's exciting. Mm. It's exciting times. I agree. It is exciting times and this scary time. But just imagine, imagine pockets of people like talking at this level instead of talking over caps and shoulds or shouldn'ts. Yes, yeah. Shouldn't jar, and the, the, the pockets of us sitting opposite them going, "Well, what about this? And what about that? Isn't it interesting about this? Isn't it? How different mm. society would be?" It's refreshing. Yeah, yeah it would be different. Yeah. Well, this is this, we're trying to break the mold on it. This is what we're yeah. trying to do. It's like the, stop doing the normal stuff and get involved in something that brings the best out of you. Make you know, make your your subject of study you and your experience, not uh, a subject as such. Make it you. Include mm -hmm. you in your study. Yeah, <laughs> if you know, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Be on your own side. <laughs> be on your own side be careful of that as a slogan ready to come <laughs> get the t-shirts printed for that one <laughs> so are we are we all good guys yes i yes david was i really enjoyed it. i'm glad i joined even though it's not my I, face even though um, your, your snotty chops is not showing no <laughs> <laughs> what we do is uh next couple of days now i will get the recording up uh there is a place it's on face i'm gonna push it up on facebook but even in the back end of the site as well all these recordings if you subscribe into the back end of the site you can just watch them all and it'll keep a track on which ones you've watched and what your progress is as well. so i'll Great. start uh, I'll, once i've cleaned it up a little bit i'll start sending people there as well so you there's other stuff on the site like uh, the two-day course and the the eight-day courses there there's recordings for that we haven't decided whether we're going to share those yet or not but uh, so, yeah. have I got, so dave have i got membership because i'm going on the two-day course uh no because you haven't been on two-day course yet all oh, right that comes with it yeah 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 it's part of the bonus so once you've been through the experience then and, and it's not because of me i'm not trying to hold that out what i no. what i want to do is i want to make sure that the people that are in the membership group have all been in the hot seat and have yes. all been through that experience yes. so Makes when new people come in then they understand everybody's been through the same yes. process as them so then they they get a flavor for everybody's on the same journey they're all in the same boat that sort of thing That's you know? make, that makes sense yeah yeah Whereas if I plonked you in there now and they don't know you and they and you haven't done a course, that could be a bit raw. Well, yeah, yeah, I could, yeah, you're right. They'd be like, "Who the hell is this snotty, <laughs> snotty coming to join us? What is going on?" <laughs> Who invited snotty? <laughs> <laughs> the okay, thing with these calls as well, especially these free ones. Any friends that you've got, forward the links out because there's people that could sit on these that would really benefit. They don't have to come to the yeah. call. It's not what this is about. It's about being able to just reach out to more people that are just, especially in this period, where things exactly. start making sense to people. So forward the links on and get more people on the call. So yeah, there's a link to get subscribed onto the many onto that um, like that bot thing. As soon as you click the link, you subscribe, then you'll get informed of uh, the next the next meeting, which is going to be next meet next Friday, eleven o'clock. Yeah. Okay. So, are we good? Are we good for now? Good for now. Yeah. Yes. Good for yes. now. For now. Okay. Yes. Are you ready for the big goodbye? Yes. Yeah. 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 Dave, so, can I just ask, where do you find that information to pass to somebody else when they want to uh, join this um, the Zoom? Uh, just send me a message, and I will. I send you uh, like a, a link. And then you share oh. it with you. If you share that link with them and they click it, they yeah. end up on the, they'll end up on the list then. Or oh, if you're on LinkedIn, I just shared your post. If if when they press the link, it takes them to the messenger bot, and then they click the link, that's when they get subscribed. If you don't click the link, if you if they just get the link, 
that's not a link for the meeting. That's a link to get on no. the list. Yeah. Yes, yeah. So they've got to click the link. Once they click the link, you're on the list. Then you'll start receiving when the next one's going to be and use the recording from the last one. Okay. Happy Are we clear? Right. So, so I'm going to attempt my goodbye again. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. 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 See, you, see you next week. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.